Right, guys, Asian Hornets, something far more sexy uh, than what we've been talking about so far. Um, uh, try and keep to time. Um, there you go, an Asian Hornet. Who's not seen an Asian Hornet in this room? Oh my God, so many of you. <laughs> but uh, never mind, that means the majority who, who have. So there's one of our um, uh, government ID pictures. They really do look very different from lots of other insects, despite the number of hoverflies that get reported to me. Um, Izzy came up with my title, Where Are We and Where Do We Go Next? I think uh, most of it's on where, where Are We, but we'll come to that one in a, in a, in a little bit. Um, I'm going to bombard you with a graph to start with. There you go. So this is where we have come from. So, um, you know, uh, first hornet detected in Jersey in August 2016. Um, what we've got here is spring queens, primary nests, secondary tertiary nests, and total nests as the grey column here. I'm colourblind, so if I blurt out the wrong colour, you'll know why. Don't all just look confused and correct me. Um, so just 13 nests in 2017, that grew to uh, 53 nests in 2018. Numbers of queens very low, we weren't really doing spring trapping um, at that time. Um, we then started spring trapping, we had some queens in 2019, went up to 83 nests in total that were detected in Jersey. Then it fell back, we don't really know why that happened. Um, with only 38 nests. It was a big sort of relief. We didn't know where this one was going to go to. But anyway, um, as you'll see, came back with a massive vengeance. Um, strangely, lots, lots of queens here and reduced numbers of nests. So we were thinking, wow, far, far easier to catch queens in the springtime and save yourself all the work of finding nests. And then that all went very wrong in 2022 when we only caught 55 queens, but boy, the number of nests shot up. And we thought, oh my God, where is all this going? I mean, that was an enormous amount of work. It really was for the volunteers to track those uh, nests. Um, so where are we this year? This graph, I'm afraid I haven't split out primary and secondary nests, but this is where we are now. For, so from yesterday, it's 266 nests that have been detected. Um, yeah, an incredible amount of work, it really is. Um, I think if I remember right, about 160 of those nests have actively been tracked by volunteers with all that work of bait stations and following hornets back to the nests, lines of sight and all that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, it looks like we are on a pathway to, well, 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 well established Asian hornets in Jersey. And as we'll come on to later, you know, what do we do about this? Um, so just to sort of map a little bit, the kind of part of, uh, sort of development of nests in, in, in Jersey over the years. This is, oops, go go back. This is 2017, you know, all very sort of uh, uh, low numbers. Uh, SN is secondary nests, PN is primary nests. Primary nests are the nests that the queens build uh, on their own in the springtime, and then normally they move house. Not always, but around July time, the queen will move with workers and start to build a nest, usually very high in trees. They don't make it easy for us, they really don't. Um, 2018, there's the map there. Um, you'll notice through these pictures, there's a weighting towards um, the east of the island and for some of them, particularly the northeast of the island. Why might that be? Proximity to France, 22 kilometres away. And I think somebody earlier on uh, uh, today talked about the whole of May being northeasterly winds, not what we want. I mean, May is when queens are still flying around looking to establish, um, not all of them, but looking to establish their primary nests. And they're being blown over to Jersey's coast. We catch lots of them. Whoops. We catch lots of them uh, in, in this sort of area in traps. Uh, each year. It's nice to catch them, but we know where they're coming from. So that's 2018. Then we have uh, 2019. They don't much seem to like uh, the west of the island, but that's changed this year. Um, yeah, not quite sure why. It's a bit more windswept, 
Uh, I'd say it, there are fewer trees and sort of um, nice sheltered uh, valleys, but um, yeah, that is, has changed uh, this year. Um, 2020, the numbers dropped back. Um, might have had something to do with COVID. I've wondered about that and sort of reduced freight and passenger transport into the, um, into the islands. But um, not sure about that one. Um, then we get to 2021 and our first nests appear up in uh, the northwest of the island in St. Wands. Um, then 2022, the, uh, I'll get the colour wrong. Is that white or is it pale blue? It's grey, okay, so there you go. Um, uh, those are nests that we ended up leaving in trees after we uh, treated them. Uh, ideally we wouldn't, but it's a hell of a lot of work, not just to treat the nest logistically and everything else, but to um, uh, remove them afterwards. So those were left in, in, in trees. Um, so that's 2022, and then 2020, ooh, no, 2022 again, 2023 looks like that. Um, the few grey ones are nests that, that are at this very moment in time are untreated. I think it's eight on there. Uh, might have been another one added this morning. Um, so, you know, logistics of treating nests is a bit of a nightmare um, to, to work out. And you can see the coverage all across the island. It's quite extensive and a lot more up in, in, in this corner again this year. Strangely enough, not as many as I expected in this corner, given those northeasterly winds. Um, but we've had a few problems with some of the trackers and enough personnel to cover that area of Jersey. And that might have something to do with it. Um, so, yeah, um, the spring trapping, which I mentioned, um, this year we caught 476 queens. I mean, it's like sort of nine times any other year before. Um, I think we have to pat ourselves on the back because 476 queens, um, we don't know how many nests that saved us, but it must have saved us a lot. I mean, if, if only half of them would have gone on to form uh, nests, um, you know, that would have been an Im immense amount of work to trap, so to, to, um, to track those nests. So I think the spring trapping is a really important part of our, our, our process, and we will most definitely be continuing that uh, next year. Um, moving on. So nest locations, lots of people talk about nest locations and how awkward they are and amazing they are and surprisingly are they are. I mean, you know, wasps nest just turn up in banks and kind of were fairly accessible and, and everything else. It's very, very different for Asian Hornets, Vespa, Velutina. Um, lots of them in buildings, um, you know, this column here. Most of those are what we call the primary nests. They tend to be low down, uh, usually no higher than about three or four meters, something like that, usually quite accessible. Garden sheds, carports, lean-tos, those sorts of things are kind of classic places. Um, we do find them in brambles and, and those sorts of places as well, but we have to track them to brambles. They're usually reported in, 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 in households. Um, the, miscellane the miscellaneous includes a lot of bird boxes this year. I mean, a perfectly sheltered environment, but we've also had uh, chimeneas. We've had some children's play equipment. Uh, we've had a compost bin. We've had inside, in previous years, we've had inside a, um, a cable drum. Um, yeah, we, uh, th th they come up with surprising places, that's for sure. Uh, they're like roofs, literally inside the roof. Um, and on occasions we've had them, when they've outgrown the space in the roof, they just build outside the roof on top of the tiles. Um, and usually the nest is uh, uh, spotted. Uh, ground uh, nests are quite unusual, of course, potentially quite dangerous. Um, they like sort of rabbit holes and those sorts of things, and they attach their nest usually to the upper uh, part of the, the rabbit hole because the entrance to these, uh, certainly these early uh, nests, is always on the underside of the nest, not at the, the top, very rarely on the top. Uh, hedges and shrubs, of course, high risk um, place for them to be. We've had about 10 gardeners stung this year because they disturbed nests with leaf blowers or cutting hedges and those sorts of things. So it really underlines the risks of this uh, species in our, um, 
in our environment. Uh, I said that the secondary nests move to trees and there's a big column of them, them in trees, anywhere from about five meters to 30 meters. And as my Guernsey colleagues will testify, they really don't make it easy for us at all. They're usually right in the top of the tree, usually the top two or three meters of the canopy. Um, and uh, often not visible at all. You often find a place to see it, one place, take a step to the right, you can't see it, take a step to the left, and um, uh, you can't see it. So it can be really awkward. Uh, walls, a few, and eaves of buildings, you know, these roof vents, they like those. And one, and one on a cliff this year. Uh, we've had other cliffs, uh, cliff nests in previous years. Uh, on occasions, just a matter of meters above the high tide mark. So uh, amazing, um, and not easy to, um, uh, deal with. Um, so just a little bit about Asian audit management in, in Jersey in general. There's me as the coordinator, so I'm the central point for all those public reports. Um, some of the reports are quite entertaining, some of them are very competent, and some of them are just dreadful. When you get crickets and bumblebees, and this year lots of hornet mimic hoverflies reported to you, you do scratch your head sometimes. But um, Everybody gets thanked, thanked. Uh, everybody gets some ID um, pictures, uh, so hopefully they'll do it better the next time. Um, but yeah, I'm the central point for all these reports and passing them on to the volunteers, come on to that in a minute, um, and uh, so that they can do their work of uh, tracking uh, the nest. Um, I will also do training and tracking, and I'm doing the media side of things, so never a dull moment. For me. Um, public awareness really important in Jersey. We're so lucky to have this sort of community spirit in Jersey and short lines of communication into our local press, um, the radio channels, Jersey Evening Post, um, those sorts of things and um, people who are kind of um, sort of interested in getting out sensible public awareness messages. You know, we don't have the kind of tabloid press um, atmosphere in Jersey. Um, so public awareness, they're really our secret weapon in this battle. I've always said that uh, in terms of reporting them. We also have a great Facebook page, um, thousands of people on it, a lot of them not in Jersey, and it's called the Jersey Asian Hornet Group. And uh, um, one of our volunteers, John DeCartre, posts lots of pictures of the nests and what we're doing and why we're doing it and lots of people from off island ask questions and very happy to help and share our expertise um, reporting and recording um, we've got three lines of communication for the reporting phone people in jersey want to use a phone and talk to someone especially if they're terrified about this buggy thing flying around their sitting room um, email and we're using an app called the jersey asian hornet watch app that was developed by the um uh, Centre for whatever it is in hydrology in, in, in the UK um, and it works very well in, in, in Jersey as, as well. Some people just like doing the tech. Um, uh, there are other sort of channels of reporting which are less easy for me to uh, manage, you know, sort of kind of um, Facebook Messenger and those sorts of things but um, never mind, people just use what they, um, uh, what they can. Um, on the recording side, good old Excel, I like that. Also, we use something called Epic Collect 5, which is a free um, uh, sort of a data collection platform, and you can create bespoke forms on it. So I've done that for recording the necessary information that we want to gather about um, uh, all reports, whether Asian Hornet or not. Um, uh, spring Queen trapping, I mentioned that before, very important part of our programme and we are stepping things up. Um, uh, this year, we had about 340 traps mobilized across the island. We have a system of what I call area coordinators, so I don't have to do all the work. Area coordinators are experienced volunteers, Asian Hornet volunteers in Jersey, and they are responsible for a load of what are called spring trappers. So the area coordinator is the first point of contact for a spring trapper for 
a trap that got broken, any questions, some more attractant, or if they've caught something big and buzzy that they're not sure about in it, they go to the area coordinator, not me. Um, next year, we intend to increase the number of traps to 500 across the island if we possibly can and get as many of those spring queens as possible. Um, uh, bycatch is a big issue with spring queen trapping. Our traps are adapted with uh, bycatch release holes. They've been six millimeters, but I think we're going to grow those to seven millimeters after some testing uh, next year and also monitoring the trap and releasing any bycatch on a daily basis is really important. I won't compromise on that. There's a lot of talk about selective traps, but I'm not convinced by any of them. So I think it's better to engage with people and get people to just run a trap properly and release the bycatch. Um, tracking, really important part of the process, of course. Uh, every tracking case starts with a report and um, uh, the volunteers are amazing at tracking down nests, literally by you attract a hornet to a bait station and observe the direction it flies off in. Uh, sometimes you take times and that indicates the distance to the nest. And then you have to map this information, a flight line uh, to a certain distance. And that informs the next step of your tracking case. And then you move um, and you gradually home in on that ne nest. When your flight time gets down to about a minute, you're standing about 30 meters from the nest and then you look for it. Um, it's great fun and addictive, I have to say. Um, but never mind, what else? And nest destruction, of course, a really important part of the process. Uh, we're using, we are using a combination of um, volunteers who have been trained in, in the use of pesticide and really long extendable lances, a uh, French bit of equipment, they extend um, out to about 30 meters if you need them to. It's a bit of a, a knack to use them to get nests in trees. Uh, ideally, you're able to see the nest as well. Um, many of the lower down nests are done by volunteers. We try not to use pesticide if we possibly can. Um, so uh, one of our volunteers developed what he calls the Asian Hornet Hoover which um, suck, literally sucks the hornets out of the nest and it works really well actually. And of course you've then got a clean nest to analyze. Um, so really important part of the, the process. Um, ooh, uh, research, community uh, science, I think community science came up last year. Um, Chris Isaacs is doing a lot of the work on identifying uh, the virgin queens and looking at how hornets behave, working with Exeter University as well on a gut analysis project. Um, and um, they are fairly soon going to be publishing the results of uh, uh, analysing the, the, the gut contents of lots of hornet larvae that we gathered from them from lots of nests, I think about 93 nests over three years, I think it was, something like that, yeah. So long-term management, um, I said could we maintain rather than can we maintain, because, I don't know, this year's been so mad. Um, I'm going to rattle through this, you know, a few things here, it's sort of factors in, 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 uh, in maintaining sufficient control. Some of these we can control, some of we can't. So the top one, obviously, finding nests before early October, and that, that, that date's been blown out of the water already this year. Um, can't do much about Cottontown Peninsula with their record numbers last year. Can't do much about survival rate of overwintering queens or the prevalence of northeast uh, of easterly winds. Uh, we can do quite a lot about catching um, queens in the springtime. We can do a lot about public awareness. And we can do something about this, you know, having skilled uh, trackers to help us with the work of finding those nests. Um, just very big uh, impacts. Um, honeybees get talked about an awful lot. Um, it, the, the amount of honeybee DNA in the guts of hornets varies from zero, I think, a nest in Alderney, up to about 80%, I think, of it's been found. Um, but obviously beekeepers are quite vocal group. Honey and uh, honeybees get sort of talked about as amazing pollinators. Um, there are lots of other pollinators and hornets are eating them. Wasps, wild solitary bees, flies. Um, they are opportunistic, opportunistic predators of lots of different uh, um, sort of hymenoptera species. Uh, economic uh, impacts, control, cost of nest destruction, other economies. 
Uh, soft fruit, grapes possibly impacted, you know, butchers, fishmongers can't have open counters in France anymore. They all have to be protected. Um, it's not very nice if you're having, trying to have a quiet drink at a cafe and you've got hornets buzzing around your beer or white wine or champagne. They love it. They really do. And of course, stings is an important part of uh, uh, impacts. Um, and just really, where do we go next? Um, the answer is I don't know. So we're talking to Guernsey. Any ideas you might have thinking about this for a full review at the end of this uh, year? Um, you know, we could cancel, cancel the program completely. We could just do even better. Um, we could do other things like I wouldn't be the central point for all the public reports, but we rely on uh, monitor traps, monitored by the volunteers. Um, we can leave what I call the Jersey Asian Hornet group to manage themselves and track nests. And we could probably change the way we destroy nests as well, whether we destroy all of them or leave the really awkward ones. Um, so there's a lot to think about as we go forwards. Sorry, a real rush there, but um, yeah, discussion with stakeholders. So thank you very much indeed.